You have heard us talk a lot about Linode. Linode! I've heard there's some new stuff with Linode! Yeah, I'm trying to talk about it. Oh, sorry. There, there's like new one clicks. You can just one click. You don't have to know what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, I tried one of them. I'm trying to tell people about it. Which one did you try? I tried Beef, which by the way, is a terrible name for a programming project because I had to try to Google some documentation. Guess what comes up when you Google beef? Where's the beef? Not beef software. <laughs> beef stands for browser exploitation something framework? Something like that, yeah. You can test your browser. And the amazing thing about it, and the amazing thing about Linode is it is a one-click install. Actually, there, you do have to run a script too. It's yeah. not just one click, but it's super convenient. And if you head over and take a look at the beef installation page, you'll see how much time they're saving you. It's a lot of time. It's kind of annoying. And it's pretty cool because we talk a lot about using Linode to get into a new job. And if you're just getting into penetration testing and security, seems like a great place to start. Yes. The part that's exciting for me was the stuff that we talked about on the level one news. And it really crystallized for me playing with it how much stuff advertisers have access to with things like browser fingerprinting and stuff like that. You're going to talk a lot about that. Do you remember we figured out there was some magic number for the fingerprint? It was only like four or five dimensions. Shockingly low and beef will show you a lot of dimensions. It knew exactly what my GPU was, which is kind of unique because it's in a virtual environment. And it's like, oh, they know who I am. And your local directory that yes. you were running the file from and your browser, which had your name in it. That's not considered privileged information. <sighs> your Active Directory username or your local username. So this is a really cool one click. It's pretty easy to get started and it's really easy to use. It's kind of like chess. There's stuff in here you're not gonna understand, <laughs> but if you don't understand it, great way to learn, right? I would say even if you're not planning on being a security professional, if you just work in a corporate environment and you wanna show your corporate overlords what kind of risk they're taking, well, this will let you do it. And it embeds in any website as just a one line JavaScript include, which is why you've gotta work on making your web, secure, web properties as secure as possible. You could use this for malicious purposes too, but we don't recommend it. Yeah, don't do that. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to detect it's if it's being used maliciously too. Yeah, actually it gives you those nice little gooey warnings about when they might be able to notice when you're doing something and when you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> ah. We're going to install Beef and check it out. And a lot of people are going to be angered by me saying this, but let's be honest. Installing things on Linux can be very, very annoying. If you just head over to the beef GitHub and look at the standard installation process, it's just, it's not as convenient as other operating systems. I'm sorry. I know many of you wear that like a badge, but I do not. I find it very annoying. And when I just want to try something out and see what it can do, I really appreciate services like Linode. You know, we love Linode because they have the beautiful one click marketplace. And the one click marketplace has just been expanded. They have a lot of cool new stuff. We're going to be checking out a couple of new things that they've got on here. And one of those is beef. Beef is a browser exploit tool that will test your browsers. And uh, luckily there is a one click install in the marketplace here. So we're going to check that out and we're going to check it out for free. And so can you by using the free Linode credit with our promo code. You can also check out any of these other things that you want by using that code. It's a very simple process to get your one click started. You're gonna choose a password for the beef user and then you're gonna put in your email address. There are advanced options. Uh, if you want to set this up correctly you will probably set up SSL. You might set up an actual domain for it. Uh, you can do various things to harden it. That's certainly something that uh, I would recommend, but I'm not going to do that because I just want to try it out. I'm going to install this. I'm going to access it directly via the IP. I'm going to install it as root. I'm not going to have a domain. I'm not going to use SSL. I'm going to do a variety of things you probably shouldn't do here just to check it out. So keep that in mind if you were doing a production version of this. I'll do a cheap Linode. It probably doesn't even need this much, to be honest. That's uh, one cent per hour, $10 monthly. I think we can afford that. 
and we'll call this B video and we'll set a root password. Not going to bother with SSH keys either, because again, I just want to demo this, make sure everything is correct. Selected beef, all the required options. Let's create our Linode. Oh, I didn't choose a region. We'll go with Atlanta. There we go. Now it's provisioning. Once this is done, we simply need to log in with the account we set up using this IP address. As soon as you log in with your root user, you will have some scripts prepared for you in uh, the root directory there, the home directory for the root user. And you simply need to run this stack script that is prepared for you. This will take a long time. This is going to install all of Ruby and all the requirements and the web server and everything. And it's going to set up beef. Expect this to take five to six minutes because it also installs a lot of documentation and that will take a very long time. If you ever lose track of what your URLs are or you're not sure if beef is running, you can go to slash home slash beef and just colon slash beef to run the beef set startup again. If it's already running, it won't be a big deal. It will tell you that, but it will still print all of your URLs and everything. So this is convenient. If you don't remember how to get to the, the UI or the hook or anything, you can always just run this command and it's going to let you know, Hey, it started. You'll also get running logs if anything goes wrong here. So you can see we got some, we're connecting without SSL. So we are spawning some errors here, but we can get our hook and UI URL right here for the rest of this process and we can get a lot of error output. Now that we have confirmed that beef is running on our Linode, we should get the uh, login URL from the output of that attempt to run beef that told us we were already running. If you don't want to do that, you can just use the IP address colon 3000 slash UI slash authentication. Uh, you can see here I'm accessing via localhost. I'm not actually accessing via localhost. I'm just hiding my IP address. So you would go to directly to the Linode IP address. Then we log in with beef and whatever password you set up during the beef install. If you don't remember what that is, you can see it and change it in config.yaml in your slash home slash beef folder. So here we are, we're logged into beef. Now, one thing that we need to do for this immediately is we need to get a browser hooked so that we can start looking at it. So the way this thing works is you must take your browser that you want to test and you must visit a URL so that the browser hook can be uh, sunk into that browser. You know, just like a phishing attack, you would get somebody to fall for your phishing URL and then you'd have this kind of information about them. You'd be monitoring the things they do and we could look at some of the things that you can monitor. So let's go ahead and uh, if we go back to our SSH, we can get the hook URL. Now we need to get a browser to visit and accept this JavaScript payload so that Beef can start spying on them and we can start using the interface and checking out that browser. Now, if you look back here, when you started Beef from the command line, you have the hook URL given to you. Now you need, you can't just visit that URL. You need to embed it. You need to include that in some HTML that you create but if you don't want to bother with that if you're just trying this out like i am you can also instead of going to the directly to the javascript there are demos installed with your uh, beef install if you go to slash demos slash basic.html in place of hook.js this will be a demo page that includes hook.js as part of the demo so you see right here you should be hooked into beef. When you go to this page, you will, this browser will now be hooked in. You can head back to the interface and start doing your uh, audit and, you know, trying to do horrible things and spy on this browser. So let's take a look at that. When we go back to our beef UI, we log in and we should have some browsers to take a look at and push around a little bit here. And we do. Now, normally you would see some external IP addresses here. We have taken some steps to hide that from you. So just keep in mind that this is a little abnormal. 
But we can click through to one of these and we can see some interesting stuff in here. Do you have QuickTime installed? Do you have WebGL installed? These are all important things if you wanted to try to, you know, do some penetration testing. And what, what are you telling me about it? I know what browser you're using and so forth. I know C drive slash users slash Wendell. I know who this is. So there's something that you might not think about. He is uh, accessing the file on his desktop. This would normally be a web address. That's part of the workaround for the JavaScript. Uh, we see hardware, stuff like that. He's running Windows 10. That could certainly tell me something security related. I can see his resolution. These are the kinds of things that can help you build one of those uh, unique identifiers for a person. Like, you know, if you put all of these things together into a unique identifier, this is kind of the kind of thing that very few people will share. And so you can really drill down just based on this information as a fingerprint. But in the logs tab, we got even cooler stuff. We've got whether or not they are currently connected. Sometimes the tab seems to go to sleep, which is interesting. You can lose your hook. Uh, we've got browser focus, whether or not they're actually looking at the browser when that happened, when mouse clicks happened and where we could using this information completely redraw the user's clicks and overlay them on the website because we know the URL, which is interesting. I'm not sure if it's got the scroll information in here, but still a host of stuff in these logs that's really cool that you can go through. And uh, this is just by default. You don't have to do anything. You just have to plug in the browser and all of a sudden it's pulling all this stuff and keeping logs of it. So now that we have our victim and or test browser hooked and we have them in the UI, we can begin to actually, uh, you know, beyond the logs telling us exactly what they're up to at any given time in their browser, double clicks, clicks, browser focus and things like that. We also have these commands and these are automated ways to try a variety of exploits. Now the color codes here, you see we have green ones and red ones. There is a color coding system uh, that you can read about in the documentation that will tell you like, could the, could the victim be aware of this? Could the victim see this? Is this going to be visible? Uh, it tells you what basically you can expect to get away with here without someone noticing, which is very convenient. So for example, the webcam HTML5, that's a red or an orange. So, you know, that's somebody's gonna know something's up there, but some of the others, maybe not. So for example, detect ActiveX. And we go in here and click execute, let that run. And then we take a look at the, the, uh, the data that comes back, ActiveX equals no. So we know that ActiveX is not running in this browser. And as you can see, there's a lot of different things that we can run here out of the box. There's more that you can add if you add additional modules to beef. You can also combine this with other stuff like uh, Metasploit, for example. If you have Metasploit set up in conjunction with beef, then you can do the browser, browser auto pwn, which is cool. So as you can see, there's a lot to explore there. And some of these take no inputs and some of them take quite a few inputs that you're going to have to try to understand. So you can kind of go from no knowledge poking here to high knowledge, you know, real serious testing with this thing. You've got the proxy and the XSS raise tab. We don't really have anything to demo with that, but the network tab is also pretty cool because it will try to visualize how the, the browser and the network is uh, currently hooked up here and how we are connected to it, which again is very cool. We can look at their hosts and services. There is a lot to explore here. And again, we're just trying to do a high level look at it, but it certainly seems like something that is worth your time to explore if you're interested in this kind of testing. All right, so you're up and running with beef now, but this is actually really just scratching the surface. You can do a lot more with this. There's another framework called the Metasploit framework and you can get plugins for that. There's, there's really a lot you can do. There's a lot of modules and not all of them are on by default and you can write your own modules for beef. Yeah, what you gotta understand is that beef itself isn't really anything crazy or malicious. These are actually exploits that are just sort of packaged up in a neat, easy to test way. This is really made like if you're an application developer, you could use this 
to test different things on your on your website to make sure that it's as secure as it can be otherwise you're going to be able to let somebody insert this kind of thing or, or whatever it's really uh, it's really scary what's possible when you've got you know the command and control infrastructure for these browsers I mean you were pushing commands to live connected browsers after the fact and all they have to do is visit a URL and stay there yeah they do have to stick around there but you get constant logging yeah did they lose focus did they click where did they click on the screen is the dev tools open yeah and oh did they maybe minimize the browser <laughs> did somebody go to right click inspect hide everything <laughs> <laughs> so hey if they minimize the browser we've got time to work <laughs> So this is really kind of scary that this is because you know that advertise like blue Kai, uh oracle stuff yeah. and like the adobe cloud like they're all in here doing this as part of their ad model here's what you have to think about because we look at that hook.js right and think about what size file that is and then think about how much javascript all these new sites are serving us every day <laughs> it's a lot more than that <laughs> what are they doing <laughs> And that's just one of the one clicks. They have a ton of them on there. We might look at a couple of other ones, but I'd never heard of beef. And now this is a great way to go into something new. We're not really big security experts, but this was easy to use. And I'm actually kind of interested in learning about more of these exploits. Yeah, this is, this is a really awesome thing. Thanks Linode for making the one click and thanks Linode for sponsoring this video. We'll see you later.